Hi, it's Farmer Jay, and welcome back to part three of our complete beginner's guide to Farming Simulator. Now that we have the basics out of the way, we know how the menu operates, we know how the dealership works, we know how to buy and sell equipment and repair it, it's time to actually get into the meat and potatoes of farming, if you'll excuse the expression, but that is the most important thing, how to make money. In order to do that, we're going to cover contracts, which can generate a lot of money. We'll look at leasing versus buying equipment. And we'll look at what to do with our grains that we've already harvested, as well as the straw that's in our field. And finally, we'll look at buying another field and expanding our farm a little bit. We have plenty of money in the bank. We have just under 100000 So we really haven't spent that much yet. And then hopefully with the money we make with contracts, we will be able to afford to buy that extra field without much trouble. We could always take out a loan, but I don't want to do that. Not yet anyway. So now that's out of the way, let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing I've decided is we don't need three tractors. We're a small farm. We could probably do everything with one tractor because we only have three fields right now and hopefully a fourth at the end, but three is definitely overkill. So we have to decide which tractor is gonna go. The one thing I forgot to cover in our last video was horsepower requirements. We brought the new cultivator. Let's open up our garage menu and we'll take a look at that cultivator. And if we look at the requirements on it, it requires 180 horsepower to pull. So let's look at our tractors. The first tractor is 190 horsepower. That's going to be the tractor we need to pull that cultivator as the other two tractors are only 175 horsepower and 170 horsepower. So it's going to be a choice between the 7810 and the Massey Ferguson 3670 as to what we get rid of. I think we're going to get rid of the Massey Ferguson because we haven't used it yet. So let's jump right in and we will empty the trailer behind us. Which has got just under 4,000 liters of wheat in it. To empty weed in the silo, just drive over the uh, the grate and then press I. And as you can see, the ta trailer will tip up and it will empty into our silo. As soon as it's done, we can now walk over to our silo and remember how in the last video it said there was nothing in it, it now shows that we have 3,695 liters of wheat. We can leave our trailer where it is. So we'll press Q and I'm gonna take this tractor to the dealership. I will see you over there. 
All right, so here we are back at Clever Motors, the local dealership. Let's go ahead and sell the tractor, walk up to the wrench, we'll press R, and I keep closing it to save screen, screen space, but I should be leaving the help menu open so you guys can see what the options are. So press F1. Our vehicle options, it doesn't need repairing and it's paints in good condition. They're offering us more than they did through the garage menu. They're offering us 85,349. So yes, let's go ahead and sell that. Okay, so we're now at 184,453. We made enough money off that sale to be able to buy the next field. So let's just tab back to our farm. And then we will open the menu. And rather than waiting, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna buy field 47. So press the X key, highlight field 47, and we'll hit space to buy it. Do we wanna buy it? Yes. So we're now the proud owners of a field. Happens to be a field with canola in it. So while, um, let's go ahead, rather than wait, let's just go ahead and we'll start harvesting it. So we'll start our combine. And we'll drive to the field. Now the first thing, oh, I almost hit that pole we're going to have to do is attach our header to the combine and I do as I warned you in the previous videos I do hit a lot of things and I do have crop destruction turned off so this isn't probably the most realistic but I also explained why I have crop destruction turned off because the AI workers tend to make a mess of the fields. So we want to turn on the harvester and we'll start harvesting that field. We'll let a worker do that because while that field's harvesting, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look after our two remaining fields. Now, the first field that's cultivated doesn't have any fertilizer on it as we saw plus it also needs lime so a little trick especially if you have time is to use oilseed radish to give yourself a free fertilizer state and we talked a little bit about that as one of the crop options but what oilseed radish does is for very minimal seed cost, it'll grow, then you cultivate or plow it in, and it'll give you a free fertilizer state. So that field will only need one extra fertilizing to reach 100% infertility. So again, I'm going to press H and let a worker take over. 
we hop out, we can see it's growing oilseed radish. Seed is a lot cheaper than fertilizer. Let's have a quick look at the difference in costs. Fertilizer is 1820 and we're using big bags because they're the cheapest for 1,000 liters, whereas seed is only $800 for 1,000 liters. So we're going to save some money doing it this way. So we'll let those two continue. And then after I check on the combine, we're going to look at contracts. See, as I warned you, he's driving all over the other field, which if crop destruction was on would cause all sorts of problems. So let's look at contracts. We'll have to press escape to bring up the main menu and then we'll go from there. Before we do, I just hopped out of the combine and we'll have a look at this field, the one we just purchased. Unfortunately, it had no fertilizer on it, so we're not going to get the best return on investment, but that'll change. So here we go. Let's look at the contract menu. As you can see, there are quite a few different contracts available to be done. There's a lot of spraying contracts. There's quite a few fertilizing contracts. And there's a few harvesting contracts. The harvesting contracts look quite lucrative. But there is a bug in the game right now which giants have said they will fix in the upcoming patch. So I recommend you do not, canola is fine, but I recommend you do not harvest anything which leaves behind stubble. That is all windrows, that is wheat, oats, and barley. What happens with these contracts is you harvest the field you take the product to the sell point and you get a mission fail to complete. For some reason, it's not right. The game is not recognizing the fact that you just sold the product. So yes, go ahead and do canola. I believe there is another canola one. Yep. So there's two canola ones. If you wanted to do those, do those. But we're going to focus mainly on fertilizing contracts. Because there's quite a few of them. Now we don't have any equipment right now to do the fertilizing. So we're going to have to borrow equipment. And as you can see, it'll cost us. Well, we'll get a reduced income of $205 for borrowing the equipment from that farmer. Now you can accept up to three contracts at a time. And I'm going to show you a little trick. Well, I've had a look at the contracts available. And as I said, we're going to focus on fertilizing first. So, or spraying first. So pro tip number one is to look at the contracts and see where they are. And then look at the map. So 29 is here, 32 is here, and 54 is here. So we can actually work our way from 29 to 32 down to 54, and then we can look at 37, which is all the way over here, as are the rest of, the, as is field 42. 
So let's be strategic about this. That's my pro tip for number one. Now, here's pro tip number two. Usually when you do a contract, you return the equipment when you're done. As long as you keep using the same equipment, you can actually use it to do all of the contracts. So the best sprayer option I've seen so far at 368 to rent is the one for field 54. So we're going to head, go ahead and accept that. Then we're going to accept Thirty-two, and you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to hit borrow equipment. So this is going to take us a little bit longer, but for field twenty-nine, so we're going to borrow this equipment. It'll still do all the work we need it to do. We just might have to fill it up a little bit more. So borrow items. The leased machines are waiting for you at the shop. Remember to fill the tools as needed. So we are accepted at three contracts for now. And let's exit out. I believe our harvester is actually almost finished too. Yep, he's only got a couple more rows left, but he's not going to have a full tank. So we can just leave him be. Let's tab over to the store. There we go. Now, I'm not sure how much we're going to need to buy, but let's go ahead and we'll buy some. We're doing spraying, right? Let me double check. Yeah, spraying. So we need to buy some herbicide. Herbicide's only available in the pallets. So let's go ahead and we'll buy two pallets for now of herbicide. We can always come back and buy more if we need to. So let's go ahead and we'll hook our tractor up. Put the front tank on the front. And it's always wise to double check which side of the uh, vehicle you're going to attach next. The PTO's on. I've seen people trying to attach it to the wrong side. Okay, and we'll get a little bit closer to the pallets and we'll refill the sprayer to do that we're going to hit R and you can see our spray is filling up with herbicide notice a little poison icon which means it's herbicide and not fertilizer So we've got 2,700 liters of herbicide to get started with. What's the easiest way to get to the field? I go out to the dealership, follow that path up to 29. Okay, so I will see you at field 29. So here we are at field 29. I turned on my mini map in the lower left corner by pressing the 9 key just so I could see where we are and to unfold the sprayer we press X. B to turn on the sprayer 
and because we were slightly outside of the field boundary, it told us, yes, this is only used for contract work. But as you can see, now we're in the field proper. It's killing those weeds. When you get to the end of the row, don't forget to hit B to turn off the sprayer again. Otherwise you're wasting spray. So we'll line up with the next row. Press B to turn it on and we'll start moving. And there we go. You can always hire a worker if you wanna do this. It'll cost you a little bit of money, but it's not going to cost that much. Oh, we missed a spot. The advantage with the worker is he's not going to miss spots like I just did. When he gets to the end of the field, he's going to turn around and he's going to spray the next row. He might hit that car. Why they're rubbernecking at the side of the highway, I don't know. Yep, see he's... No, he's got it. He's did it. Um, one thing to bear in mind, I forgot to mention in previous videos, with workers, is be careful of when you hire a worker. I believe 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you're fine. You just pay a regular rate. If you hire a worker outside of those hours, you pay overtime. Yes, that's a new mechanic in the game. I'm going to take over because he's getting a little bit confused here. Um, so with overtime, yes, you're literally paying double what the worker would normally cost. And my experience is that's where hiring a worker goes from being handy to very expensive. We'll keep a little bit of overlap here. Turn on our sprayer. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're almost finished this field. Now, as far as contract work goes, it's actually beneficial to do it because here we're spraying the weeds out of this field. At some point, this field is going to need to be harvested. And chances are that's going to come up As another contract if there are no weeds or the weeds have been sprayed you'll get a higher yield out of that field and the contract will be worth more as far as sprayers and fer certain fertilizer spreaders go here's another pro tip you can actually change the width so you're not wasting fertilizer to do that press ctrl Z I believe we want reduce that a little bit to 18 meters should be enough to cover what we're doing now if we had an even smaller strip to do we could reduce that width even more there we go Con contract is finished on field 29 you don't have to do the whole field you usually get away with doing 95 percent of it and it'll complete the contract so let's take a look at the contract menu Completed is field 29. This is the field we rented the equipment from. So do not go ahead and turn this contract in or else we will have to borrow equipment 
for the next two fields. Since we have to cross the road, we'll fold up our sprayer and we will head across to field 32. Yes, I know, crossing a major interstate with a tractor is probably not the best thing to do. But otherwise, it's a long way around. See, we only used 10% of our herbicide to do that last field. So we have plenty of herbicide left, hopefully, to do this next field. And this one, as you can see, is in very rough condition. It's got a lot of weeds. So we'll line up. Press B again, start spraying. And I'm gonna put a worker on, oh, I forgot to change the width back. If I had put the work on like I said I was going to, he would automatically go to maximum spray width. So while he's doing that field, we're going to check on our combine. 68% full. But the field is done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Oh, we missed a spot there. I don't like to be messy, so I'll clear that up. The reason we missed the spot was because the worker got confused by the telephone pole and didn't want to hit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the combine back, empty into the silo, and then I'm going to start work on this field. Because we want to do the same as we did with the other field. We want to put in some oilseed radish so we save on fertilizer costs. Come on, attach. Okay, I'll be right back when we've done that. Okay, so as you can see, the contract for field 32 is complete. We can go ahead and collect that. And we just brought in $10,574. So we're back over a $100,000 mark. We used a decent amount of herbicide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish doing the spraying contracts and I'm also going to do the fertilizing contracts. If you look at the fertilizing contracts, where are they? Here. Note it says... Um, you can either spray liquid fertilizer, solid fertilizer, slurry or manure. Well, we already have a sprayer, so we can do the liquid fertilizer, no problem. Just to save on a little bit of time, if I was going to move on and do start doing the fertilizing contracts, because I have a little bit of herbicide left, what I would want to do is I would want to empty that out and to empty that out I would press the I key there we go and it drops the herbicide so we would be ready to move on and fill it up with fertilizer 
So like I said, let me finish up the fertilizing and spraying contracts and then I will show you how much money we ended up with. I'll be right back. All right, that's all the spraying and fertilizing missions out of the way that I was going to do. As you can see right now, we have one mission left to collect on and we're up to $136,554. Okay, the final mission was our spraying mission. This was the one I told you not to turn in until you finished. Because we still have a, almost a full tank of fertilizer, it's gonna, sorry, of herbicide, it's gonna reimburse us for that on top of what it's gonna pay for the mission. So we should rake in a total of 4,517. If I hit collect and we go back, you can see the tractor's gone and we got $5,091 in harvest income. This video is gonna go a little bit longer than I had hoped but we have one more decision to make, and that is what to do with the straw in the field that we harvested, the wheat field. We have a choice. We can either bale it, which means either we buy or lease a baler, probably the small one here, because it's the cheapest, or we can use a forage wagon. The advantage with a forage wagon is that it will collect all the straw in one go because it's a small field. And we don't have to worry about stacking the bales onto a trailer after we've baled them. So this is probably the easiest way to go. Since we, we're not going to use this harvest wa uh, wagon or this forage wagon again in the next year. It is probably cheaper for us to lease it. Let's see what the leasing cost is. The leasing cost is 1555 And the cost on the baler, I think, is fairly similar. So it's about $300 cheaper, but then we have the hassle of stacking the bales and taking them to the sell point. So I think just for simplicity's sake, we are going to lease the forage wagon. Now, be careful when you lease. Leasing is good if you're only going to be using a vehicle like this forage wagon for a short time there is a daily fee which we saw when we rented which was fifteen hundred dollars the game will also charge you an hourly fee for leasing equipment so like i said if you're only going to use it for one day we're not going to need to harvest any straw now till next August or September based on the crops we've put in the ground or we will be putting in the ground next episode. So $1,500 makes sense as a one-time shot. Because this is such a small field, I don't know if it's going to be worth us raking up all the straw and taking it to the sell point we might be better off just cultivating it in but just to show you the process we're going to collect it all and then we're going to take it to the sell point so just like every other vehicle we want to lower the pickup and we want to turn it on by pressing b and we can now go ahead and collect all our straw. I love the animation on this as it fills up.
I definitely hope it's worth it. Like I said, I was hoping to cover a little bit more in this tutorial, but we will save the rest for the next tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will cover harvesting our oilseed radish or cultivating it in and I'll show you the fertilizer state it gets. We will cover plowing and we will also have a look at what to do during winter because once September is finished and our wheat is in the ground we won't have anything to do for a couple of months. So we'll look at either greenhouses or bees as a way of generating some income during the winter months. So, looks like we're gonna have plenty of room in the forage wagon for all the straw. And if you just give me a minute, we're almost finished harvesting. We'll take a look at where the best place to take the straw is to sell it. Um, like I said, on a small field like this, based on the leasing cost, it wasn't really worth us buying a baler or buying the uh, forage wagon for 20 some thousand. Uh, we're probably better off to wait till next year when the farm's bigger before we buy the equipment. Some people will tell you not to lease. Like I said, it makes sense for a very short term, but if you're planning on keeping the piece of equipment around for a while, then go ahead and buy it outright. Um, also keep an eye out during the year for pieces of equipment you might need. Every day there's a new sale in the in the store and you might find the piece of equipment you need. Okay, so we'll look at our crop calendar, our prices. Here we are with straw. Um, now is not the ideal time but straw doesn't fluctuate that much, contrary to what this chart might indicate. So the best place to take our straw right now is the animal dealer. And the animal dealer is up here. So straight down the main road to the animal dealer. What I'll do just so you can see how you can find buildings is I'll tag that place and as we're driving towards it you will see a giant beam of light coming from the ground there it is see the big green light on the right hand side of the screen that shows us where the animal dealer is Yeah, we got 15,246 liters of straw. Don't know what that's going to make us in terms of money, but hopefully it'll cover our leasing costs at least. Once your farm gets bigger, crops like oats, wheat, and barley are definitely worth harvesting the straw and selling it uh, because they can generate a couple of extra thousand dollars on top of what you make from selling um, the oats, wheat, and barley. So it can turn it from a reasonably profitable crop. Oh, I got cut off. Yeah, like I said, it can turn it from a reasonably profitable crop into a fairly well-paying crop. The sell point at the dealer is round the back. Now I've left interactive markers on so we can see where we're going. I know we're roughly where the uh, the places are, 
but um, for the tutorial purpose I've left it off. See the little dump icon? That's where we go. So let's sell the straw and see how much we make. We pressed I to unload just like we did for the other trailers. And we made $2,400. So we really didn't cover our leasing costs on that. Um, like I said, for a small field, I didn't think it was going to be worth it. Turns out I was right. But for tutorial purposes, you now know what to do. Let's go ahead and return our leased equipment. Open up the vehicle menu by pressing P. Go to the little key, which is the icon, which is leased equipment. Select, and we're going to return this. Yes. That way we're not charged extra costs. So, the next episode will hopefully be the last episode. Uh, episode 4. Like I said, we'll cover a few more of the basics. At the end of that, you should be ready to run your farm, keep it growing, and make some money. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section if there's anything that I didn't explain properly or you would feel you would like a little bit more of an explanation on. Like I said, drop those comments in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them or cover them in a future video. Thank you again for watching. And we'll see you in part four. Take care and stay safe.